Glimpses of Sahaja Yoga in William Blake's Paintings Part 3 Dedicated to Her Holiness Srimataji Nirmala Devi Founder of Sahaja Yoga According to Her Holiness Srimataji, some of the writings of William Blake are all about Sahaja Yoga and Blake is a great prophet of Sahaja Yoga. Likewise, Blake's paintings are full of Sahaja Yoga motifs. Glimpses of Sahaja Yoga in William Blake's Paintings Part 3 Blake's Paintings About Deities Please note, all the paintings, sketches and engravings in this slideshow are by William Blake. Blake's Paintings About Deities Sri Ganesha in the Clouds A Miraculous Photograph Taken by a Sahaja Yogi About Deities Sri Ganesha the Hindu deity of innocence and purity. An evil angel and a good angel fight for dominion over an innocent child. In this painting, Blake depicts the good angel protecting the child from the attack of the evil angel. The fight is about protecting the innocence of the child. Innocence manifests in all of us under the auspices of Sri Ganesha, the deity of innocence. However, this innocence can be attacked by individuals and by society. Sri Ganesha, the Hindu deity of innocence and purity, in this illustration, Blake has shown Lucifer hurled down to hell by the likeness of Sri Ganesha, who has a tear in his eye. Someone in the likeness of Sri Ganesha William Blake drew a caricature of his friend John Varley, as a baby elephant. John Varley was a friend of Blake's who had a childlike and innocent personality. This drawing is known as A Caricature of John Varley by William Blake. Sri Ganesha is the elephant-headed Hindu deity of innocence and purity. In this picture of Comus casting an evil spell on an innocent young lady, Blake shows an elephant-headed character sitting at the table, keeping a discreet watch on the innocent young lady. A person in the likeness of Sri Garuda, the Hindu deity who is also the vehicle of Sri Vishnu. This is plate 78 of Jerusalem, the emanation of the giant Albion by William Blake. An enthroned figure in the iconography of the Hindu goddess Sri Lakshmi. In this painting we see a crowned lady who like the goddess Lakshmi rests on a flower that floats on the sea. Notice the triple crown often associated with the Virgin Mary but also present in Hindu deities. 
Blake incorporated a wonderful icon of Sri Ganesha behind the enthroned lady. This image is plate 53 of Jerusalem, the emanation of the giant Albion by William Blake. Athena, the Adi Shakti, the primordial mother, on the far right. This is an enlarged part of Blake's painting called The Sea of Time and Space. In one of her lectures, Sri Mataji says that Athena means the primordial mother, Adi Shakti, and she was born on the Nabi Chakra in Greece. Looking at this painting, on the right, Athena, the Adi Shakti, guides Ulysses in red by pointing him towards heaven. However, Ulysses, the seeker of truth, seems to be more intent on going in the opposite direction. Blake has certainly used this opportunity to give us a beautiful painting of Athena, the Adi Shakti, the primordial mother. The Goddess Athena giving awards. The Greek Goddess Athena, seen standing in the middle of this painting, gives awards in the form of crowns of laurel. She is about to place the crowns of laurel on the sasraras of her daughters of the divine arts. Athena's daughters are personifications of Athena's divine creative powers. Sitting down from left to right, we have the personifications of sculpture, poetry, painting, architecture and music. A representation of Christ in the likeness of Sri Rama, a Hindu deity. This looks like Sri Krishna, the Hindu deity, with his disciple Arjuna. Christ as the spiritual sun. Sri Mataji teaches that the sun is the Agni Chakra and Christ resides in the sun when he acts on the Agni Chakra. Here, William Blake expressed this teaching of Sahaja Yoga through this majestic design. Quoted from You Have to Be Strong Like Christ, Easter Puja, 1988. A powerful vision of Christ. Sri Mataji was not in favour of some depictions of Christ as a very weak and thin person. Christ had to be very strong physically and spiritually or he could not have carried his cross. Sri Mataji favoured strong depictions of Christ like the ones by Michelangelo and William Blake. Another powerful vision of Christ. Christ trampling upon Satan. Christ, although compassionate and forgiving, at the last judgment he is entrusted with overcoming Satan and his hordes and with destroying sin. In the Hindu religion, several deities wield weapons in the fight against negative forces. This painting also represents the triumph of spiritual vision and inspiration over rationality.
the Archangel Michael and the Archangel Gabriel. This engraving is entitled The Judgment of the Wicked from Blake's illustrations of the Book of Job. Here, the three energy channels of the subtle system are represented. Two angels, Michael and Gabriel, are in charge of the left and right side channels respectively. At the base of the painting, the fire of the Kundalini cleanses the central channel. At the same time, Satan is expelled with two of his assistants. The Archangels Michael and Gabriel The two Archangels at the top of the stairs have been assisting man from within as he climbs the steps by nature set for man's ascent. In the Hindu religion, the Archangel Michael is known as Sri Bhairava. Sri Mataji teaches that he looks after the left side channel of the inner subtle system. The Archangel Gabriel is known as Sri Hanumana and he looks after the corresponding right side channel. The left and right side channels of the subtle system run within the left and right side sympathetic nervous system. In illustrating these lines of poetry by Edward Young, climbing the steps by nature set for man's ascent, Blake has portrayed this subtle relationship. Sri Bhairava, also known as the Archangel St. Michael. Sri Mataji teaches us that William Blake is an incarnation of Sri Bhairava. Sri Bhairava is the Hindu deity of the left sympathetic channel who patrols the gates of hell and brings light to the souls in hell. In this painting, we see the character Loss from Blake's epic poem, Jerusalem, the Emanation of the Giant Albion. Loss is a poet and a prophet. We see him carrying the sun in his right hand as he goes through death's door. In his writings, Blake identifies himself with Loss. Here, Loss is behaving like Sri Bhairava by going through death's door whilst carrying a light, the sun. In Blake's time, books often included a portrait of the author on the page before the very start of the book, a page called the frontispiece. In Blake's Jerusalem, the frontispiece consists of loss in the likeness of William Blake or as a self-portrait of William Blake. We can say this since according to Blake scholars in this painting, Loss looks just like William Blake. Thus a character who is a prophet and a poet named Loss, but who looks like William Blake, is behaving just like Sri Bhairava. Blake here is almost declaring that he is like Bhairava, patrolling up and down the left side of our subtle system and bringing light to remove all darkness as Sri Mataji explains in her lectures. Sri Nandi or Sri Bhairava the first page of the Book of Job by William Blake. At the very bottom left of this engraving, we see the head of a bull. The bull lies next to the opening words of this book, as if the bull is the narrator of this story. The story starts with, there was a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. 
This bull could be Sri Nandi, the vehicle of Lord Shiva. In the Indian scriptures, Lord Shiva rides on a bull called Sri Nandi. And Sri Nandi is another form of Sri Bhairava. Sri Bhairava can assume different forms, and Sri Nandi the bull is one of them. It is as though Blake is telling us that Thus spoke Sri Nandi, the bull, or thus spoke Sri Bhairava, considering that the bull is a form of Sri Bhairava. In actual fact, William Blake is the one writing the story, but he now appears in the form of Sri Nandi, the bull of Lord Shiva, who is a form of Sri Bhairava. In a subtle way, Blake is giving us a hint that he is an incarnation of Sri Bhairava. Sri Nandi or Sri Bhairava The last page of the Book of Job by William Blake Now we see at the very bottom right of this page the very same bull's head telling us the end of the story. So Job died, being old and full of days. The bull is holding a pen or a graver right next to the words W. Blake and Sculp. This is Blake's usual signature of W. Blake, followed by the abbreviations, which stand for invented and sculpted. Sculpted means engraved on copper plate. It is as if the bull signed his name as William Blake. So we see the bull, Sri Nandi, or Bhairava, signing off as the author William Blake hinting at the oneness between Sri Nandi, Sri Bhairava and William Blake. The Three Daughters of Job as Trigunat Mika This is a beautiful engraving from the Book of Job by William Blake. Here Job is telling his three daughters the ordeals and tests he went through before his redemption. Commenting on the trio formed by the three daughters of Job, Sri Mataji said, How beautiful! Trigunat Mika, three powers, the comforter, the counsellor and the redeemer. We have those three powers within ourselves. Do you see the Trigunat Mika in there? What a vision! How can you understand Blake without Sahaja Yoga? You cannot. I'm so proud of him. About Deities Sri Mataji said about this painting, That's just how it is. Sri Mataji pointed out three Indian deities plus Christ. Looking at the painting, they are 1. Sri Garuda 2. Sri Hanuman 3. Sri Bhairava and four Jesus Christ. Here Sri Bhairava three looks like a bull which as we know is one of the forms or symbols of Sri Bhairava. That's just how it is. This painting is one of Blake's illustrations to Dante's Divine Comedy. It is called Beatrice Addressing Dante from the Car. We see at the top of the picture B for Beatrice. She stands on a car 
that we could call a chariot. The big animal pulling the chariot is a mythical animal called a griffon. It is marked C on the picture. Beatrice stands just above the large wheel of the chariot. At the bottom right, we see Dante, marked as D, wearing a red gown. He is looking at Beatrice with his hands outstretched. Sri Mataji identified these elements as follows. A. The big wheel of the car represents the spiral of the primordial Adi Kundalini. B. Beatrice represents the seeker's individual Kundalini. She is wearing a crown while giving blessings with her hands. D. Dante is the seeker. He has his hands outstretched receiving vibrations from Beatrice. The Three Manifestations of Trigunat Mika Sri Mataji identified more elements in this painting. In the lower portion of the painting, the three ladies, according to Christian tradition, represent faith, hope and charity. In addition, according to Sri Mataji, they are the three personifications of Trigunat Mika, as follows. 1. Sri Mahakali, Hope, also the Comforter. 2. Sri Mahalakshmi, Charity, also the Redeemer. 3. Sri Maha Saraswati, Faith, also the Counselor. Sri Mataji said about this painting, that's just how it is. Now let's enjoy the vibrations of this painting. Look at the deities and the wonderful colours. Sri Garuda Sri Hanuman Sri Bhairava Jesus Christ the spiral of the primordial Adi Kundalini. Beatrice as the seeker's individual Kundalini. Dante, the seeker of truth. Sri Mahakali, Sri Mahalakshmi, Sri Maha Saraswati. The Divine Feminine, Trigunat Mika, the Holy Spirit. On this subject, Sri Mataji said, The Comforter is the left side or Mahakali. The second aspect is the Counselor, like an instructor or Maha Saraswati. The third one is the Redeemer, who gives you enlightenment through the Shashumna Nadi called as Mahalakshmi. These are the three powers which exist within us as the Holy Spirit. Looking at this painting, at the bottom, Blake depicts faith, hope and charity, which in Sahaj terms translates to Trigonat Mika, or Mahakali, Mahasaraswati and Mahalakshmi. Then, 
we see the same Trigunatmika ascending in the air, rising to a higher level. We could say that this painting is about the ascent to the divine or receiving the blessings of the Holy Spirit during the time of the Last Judgment. It could mean getting the blessings of Sahaj Yoga through Amma's realization. Let's identify the main figures in the center of this painting. Central area from the bottom to the top. One, Charity, Mahalakshmi, the Redeemer. Two, Faith, Mahasaraswati, the Counselor. Three, Hope, Mahakali, the Comforter. Again, one, two, and three, rising up in the spirit rather than in the body. Four, a synthesis of figures one, two, and three. Five, Eve. Six, Adam. Seven, Angels. Eight, the Dove of the Holy Spirit in the Sun. A, Left, God creating the universe. B, Right, Christ sitting in judgment. The Divine Feminine, Trigunat Mika, the Holy Spirit. To understand the overall design, we need to look at the marginal designs on the left and right edges of this painting. Starting on the left, from top to bottom, we see a summary of the history of humankind, from the creation to the fall. The lowest point of the fall for humankind took place when human beings crucified Christ. The landscape that goes with this state of the fall is exemplified by the Church of St. Paul's in London. Blake was not a great admirer of St. Paul or his church and uses it as a symbol of religious imperial oppression. The druidic structures are another negative feature of this landscape as they are often associated with human sacrifice. The sacrifice of Abraham and Isaac mark the point at which humankind abolished human sacrifice under a new covenant from God. Blake uses the rainbow as a symbol for all godly covenants. Left vignettes from top to bottom. 1. God creating the universe. 2. Adam and Eve expulsed from paradise. 3. Noah's Ark. 4. Rainbow over Abraham and Isaac. 5. Moses parting the Red Sea. 6. Solomon's Judgment 7. The Babylonian Captivity 8. Christ's Crucifixion 9. St. Paul's Cathedral and Druidic Buildings Dante Gabriel Rossetti gave this painting its title of An Allegory of the Spiritual Condition of Man The Divine Feminine, Trigunat Mika, the Holy Spirit. The next phase in the history of humankind after the fall is the redemption. The redemption starts with Christ's resurrection. 
In the Bible account, it all begins with the three Marys paying a visit to the tomb of Jesus to anoint his body. To their dismay, the body of their Lord was not there because it had risen and resurrected. The tomb was empty. After further milestones in humankind's evolution, including the Pentecost, we reach the highest peak during the Last Judgment, when Christ sits in glory. This highest peak gives rise to a new cycle. In the centre, from the very top, the Holy Spirit flows down, enabling the advent of Amas self-realisation. For Blake, Adam and Eve are the representatives of evolved humankind. The landscape that goes with the state of redemption is exemplified by a pastoral scene at the bottom. The shepherd sits down with his sheep. The good shepherd in the gospel parables is none other than Christ, and his flock consists of his devotees. Let us look at the vignettes on the right. Vignettes on the right, from the bottom to the top. 1. A shepherd and sheep in the fields. 2. The three Marys at the empty tomb. 3. The Pentecost. Christ's disciples get their self-realization. 4. Martyrdom of a Patriarch by Fire 5. The Seven-Headed Beast of Revelation 6. Angels Blowing the Last Trumpet 7. Christ in Glory at the Last Judgment The Divine Feminine, Trigunat Mika, the Holy Spirit. Blake paid tribute to all Christian virtues, including the classic virtues of faith, hope and charity. Personifications of faith, hope and charity appear in many of Blake's paintings. Blake depicts them in their earthly form at the very bottom of this painting, and in their spiritual form having risen to the middle of the painting. The same Christian virtues are echoed in Blake's poetry. For instance, in the poem, The Divine Image, from Songs of Innocence and Experience, Blake writes, Where mercy, love and pity dwell, there God is dwelling too. In the painting of Beatrice in the car that we saw before, Blake also depicted faith hope and charity. In that painting, Sri Mataji identified them as Maha Saraswati, Maha Kali, and Maha Lakshmi, or together as Trigunat Mika, the Holy Spirit. In this painting, the third figure on the right, counting down from the top, is the seven headed beast falling down to hell. Above it, two angels sound the last trumpet. Christ sits in glory in the clouds at the topmost right. In the middle of the painting, the children around charity represent spiritual rebirth from the mother. They are symbols of the second birth from the spirit that Christ spoke of. Charity is a personification of love, the spiritual love of the mother. At the very bottom, down on earth, charity takes centre stage. She emanates a divine aura. Is this a prophetic vision of an incarnation of the divine mother on earth?
the Divine Feminine, Trigunatmika, the Holy Spirit. In the center, at the top, the prayerful figure kneeling down has been shrouded in mystery. She is supported by two small angels and assisted by Adam and Eve. Adam and Eve are representatives of humankind. Perhaps the praying lady became one with faith, hope and charity, thus becoming a representative of their combined powers. Or Shaktis. On the far right, Christ sitting in glory seems to be turned towards the praying lady and her companions. This kneeling figure could be related to the age of Sri Kalki, a time when humankind develops collective consciousness. It's also the last judgment, or a time for our mass self-realization that Sri Mataji called the Blossom Time. At the very top, we see the light of the Holy Spirit flowing from the Dove and the Spiritual Sun and falling on the Praying Lady. She could be a daughter of Jerusalem, a daughter of the Holy Spirit, or a Sajogini. Overall, in this painting, there is a downward flow of the Holy Spirit and at the same time an upward movement or spiritual ascent. In his writings, Blake tells us that the body of Christ is the divine humanity. Similarly, this glorious painting is about the body of the Divine Mother. This includes her manifestations as Sri Mahalakshmi, Sri Maha Saraswati, Sri Maha Kali and the Holy Spirit. Within this same divine body, we meet the divine humanity of Christ, Adam and Eve, the daughters of Jerusalem, the Sahajyoginis, and all self-realized souls. This painting degraded over the years, and several marginal designs, such as the dove in the sun, can only be seen now with magnification. This painting is tremendous, let's enjoy it. Trigunat Mika Trigunat Mika is seen here as three angels or three friendly warnings above the Sahasrara. This is Blake's illustration to the phrase friendly warnings from a poem by Edward Young. Trigunat Mika The three angels standing round the Holy Family represent the three feminine powers or deities of Trigunat Mika. In this painting called the Holy Family or Christ in the Lap of Truth, the Virgin Mary is in the center with the baby Jesus in her lap. Saint Joseph is on one side of the Virgin Mary, and Elizabeth, mother of John the Baptist, is on the other side. Below, on the ground, the young John the Baptist is playing with a lamb. The Virgin Mary as the Queen of Heaven. An unfinished Blake illustration of Dante's Divine Comedy. The Virgin Mary at the top of the picture is enthroned in a rose like the thousand petal lotus of the Sahasrara.
Christ blessing, while two figures do Namaskar at his feet. Namaskar is a greeting and prostration performed during puja ceremonies in India. Shri Vishnu Maya, Goddess of Lightning. This tremendous image was created by Blake to illustrate these lines of poetry by Edward Young. The goddess bursts in thunder and in flames, the keen vibrations of truth. In India, the goddess of lightning is known as Sri Vishnu Maya. Note how the goddess of thunder and lightning in this picture is raising her index fingers. As Sri Mataji has taught us, a catch on the left Vishuddhi chakra manifests as tingling on the left index finger and one way of removing this catch is by reciting the mantra of Sri Vishnu Maya. Christ with his mother attending dinner at the house of Simon the Pharisee. Puja, a Hindu observance during worship of the deities and of the Guru. Christ beholds his mother while a devotee performs puja to his feet. In St. Luke's Gospel, this devotee is referred to as the sinful woman. But Christ tells her that by washing, kissing and anointing his feet, her many sins are forgiven. A trap is set for Jesus. This painting is called The Woman Caught in Adultery. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 8, verses 3 to 11, reads, They brought in a woman caught in adultery as a trap to have a basis for accusing Jesus. Jesus bent down and wrote on the ground with his finger. They kept on questioning him, so he said, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. They all left. The pure brother and sister relationship is expressed by the left Vishuddhi. Some extracts from Her Holiness Sri Mataji's lectures on this subject. Mary Magdalene was transformed by Christ into a beautiful, sinless person. He saw the disciple in her. People are trying to say things against Mary Magdalene and against Christ. This is the sign of the decadence of our brains and of our morality that we cannot see purity in any relationship. Christ's left Vishuddhi is expressed through his relationship with Mary Magdalene. When he stood up and said that those who have not committed any sin can stone her. But he had nothing to do with her. It was a pure relationship. A prophecy from William Blake about Sri Mataji's London residence in Brompton Square. Sri Mataji confirmed several times that when William Blake wrote about the Golden Builders, he was referring to the work of the Sahaj Yogis at her house in Brompton Square, London. 
Here is the passage in question that Sri Mataji highlighted and referred to in her talks. It comes from Jerusalem, the emanation of the giant Albion. What are those golden builders doing? Is that Calvary and Golgotha becoming a building of pity and compassion? Lo, the stones are pity, and the bricks well-wrought affections, enamelled with love and kindness, and the tiles, engraven gold, labour of merciful hands. The beams and rafters are forgiveness, the mortar and cement of the work, tears of honesty. The nails and the screws and iron braces are well-wrought blandishments and well-contrived words, firm fixing, never forgotten, always comforting the remembrance. The floor's humility, the ceiling's devotion, the hearth's thanksgiving. William Blake's Glossary of Building Terms Extracted from Plate 12 of Jerusalem, the Emanation of the Giant Albion In reality, whenever working on a Sahaj building project, we are not working on the floors and ceilings. According to Blake's Glossary below, we are actually working on our humility and devotion, and the hearths are in fact thanksgiving. For Blake, the stones are pity. Bricks, well-wrought affections, enamelled with love and kindness. Tiles, engraven gold, labour of merciful hands. Beams and rafters, forgiveness. Mortar and cement, tears of honesty. Nails and screws and iron braces, well-wrought blandishments. Floors, humility, ceilings, devotion, hearths, thanksgiving. Note, the word blandishment means praise and honeyed words. Sri Mataji said, William Blake called them golden builders because the Sahaj yogis have come and painted my house with gold. At Sri Mataji's London residence in Brompton Square, the gilding with gold started from 1981, but William Blake prophesied about the gilding in 1804, on plate 12 of Jerusalem. Sri Mataji has explained that Sahaja building projects are not just about physical results, but mostly about inner spiritual progress. William Blake's philosophy seems to coincide with this Sahaj approach as taught by Sri Mataji. End of part three of Glimpses of Sahaja Yoga in William Blake's paintings. To follow next time, Glimpses of Sahaja Yoga in William Blake's paintings, part four. To the right, we have a glorious self-portrait by William Blake, illustrating his words, Bring me my bow of burning gold, bring me my arrows of desire.